There she goes. Yep, it's still warm. Woo! Hello viewers, welcome back to another episode of The Grumpy Penguin and his weird garage. That's me, The Grumpy Penguin, I'm Jason. And today I'm gonna to be working on my TVR Chimera. Now I've had this car since uh, about the beginning of the year. I think I bought it in February of this year, uh, 2023. And um, honestly, it's been an amazing car. I've been autocrossing it, driving it on the street, taking it out to dinner. Just a great overall daily summer kind of driver. Uh, however, there were just a couple of things wrong with it when I got it. Uh, there were some paint imperfections, spent some time polishing, kind of cleaning that up. Those have, mo for the most part, have cleaned up pretty well. The other big issue I was having, um, it was running just a smidge hot, and after diving into it, I see now why that was the case. Um, TVR used some mild steel metal joiners for their silicone hoses in the cooling system, which after almost 30 years have pretty much rotted. Uh, my initial thought was, I'll just change the coolant out, uh, make sure the thermostat's good. Uh, I started pulling the system apart and it was just shagged. Um, I'll try to throw up some photos of it. I think I still have some pictures of when I took it apart. Uh, unfortunately, I noticed that pretty much the day before I was gonna run it at a autocross, so I quickly went to Home Depot and did a little Home Depot racing and botched it together with some metal parts from Home Depot. That is not the right way to do it, but it got me through the event. So now I'm revisiting the issue after ordering some more silicone hoses and joiners and some metal bits that are aluminum so they won't rust. So that said, uh, first step is going to be getting the uh, coolant, which is actually pretty much just water at this point, uh, getting that out of the car, and then we'll bring the car into the shop and start putting together the kit that isn't a kit, it's just pieces. So uh, I've got about eh, a few hundred dollars in parts that I've ordered. I've over ordered, as you can see, uh, with what I've got, I've got some 90s, I've got a small bend or a shallow bend, uh, and then I have some 90 metal pieces as well. So should be able to put it together with less than all of these pieces, but I just over ordered because this is kind of specialty stuff to get and I wanted to be able to knock this project out in one day, hopefully one day. So let's get into it. All right, so the old pipes are off, or the old hoses, I, I should say. Um, this is the upper radiator hose. It's pretty uh, simple. So should be able to take kind of some of these pieces here, make that work. That's basically what came off of there. Might only, might actually be able to get away with just using one of these by the time you lop it off the length. Uh, so that could save some money there. I'll put the parts in the description below once I figure out what works and what doesn't. So for the, what, 12 of these that are in the United States that may be facing this problem. You could probably f play along. If you're in England, I think there are kits available, but it's, by the time you get it shipped to the US and wait six, eight weeks on freight and everything else, it's probably not worth it. There are solutions here in the United States. Um, and as I said, we're gonna talk about hose size. Some of these are inch and three eighths, some are inch and a half. Uh, that's in freedom units. Uh, for those of you playing in England, that's going to be 35 and 38 mil hoses. So, or Canada, I suppose, would also be using millimeters. So first thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is get the swirl pot remounted. Uh, popped it off of there. As I suspected, it is an aftermarket piece. I looked it up, uh, but very similar to the factory piece. Uh, sprayed it with a little loom bright, cleaned it up nice. And the only hose I wanna change out is this one. It wasn't damaged in any way, it's just blue, and I'm not gonna use blue hose. So. Step one, and that goes from uh, this little elbow piece here into the thermostat housing. So step one is to find some hose. That's the right diameter, either 35 or 38. I haven't checked yet. And get it cut to length. This is where it gets a little interesting. 
the radiator uh, is 38 or 35 mil, aka inch and three eighths hose. So this will be for the radiator hose that connects the upper radiator hose to connect from the radiator to, and we're probably the best way to do it is to see if I can't wedge it onto the inch and a half and then use inch and a half tubing for the remainder of the system. So that's gonna be kind of the rub there. I do have some straight inch and a half uh, silicone hose that I bought. So figure out where that is and start cutting things to length. All right, found the inch and a half. So this is kind of an odd mix of inch and a half and inch and three eighths piping. So this is a little bit odd, um, but this is inch and a half should pop right on here. Absolute perfect fitment. And the only other thing I got to make sure of is that the thermostat housing coming out of the radiator is the correct size. If it's too big, to be honest, what should happen is just cut this off and replace it with inch and three eighths stuff. However, practically speaking, probably not gonna happen. We'll just cram on some 38 mil. So stand by while I check that on the car. All right, as suspected, the uh, thermostat outlet housing is inch and a half, goes to an inch and a half on here. We'll make the upper radiator hose work with uh, some creative hose adapting. So I'm gonna lop off a piece of this silicone hose here. This is HPS brand hose, not a sponsor of the show, uh, but reach out if you want to be because their stuff is amazing. Uh, I've got it in the Datsun project pretty much exclusively. Uh, and obviously this is my go-to for theirs as well. Um, and actually these little aluminum radiator pieces are theirs. They just don't make a aluminum 90. That's the only thing I had to get from Speedway Motors. This is actually a Speedway part uh, because HPS doesn't make these or they were totally out of stock with no return date. I forget what the situation was, but uh, HPS is definitely awesome stuff, highly recommended. So anyway, let's get the swirl pot put back in. All right, I've found with cutting silicone hoses that you always wanna start with pretty much a brand new blade every time uh, when you're cutting because the sharper the blade, the less likely you are to lop your finger off. Um, so, and then for measuring, I usually just put a hose clamp on, kind of lightly tighten it and use that as a cutting template. So, just gonna use the old piece as a measurement. As I said, old piece fit pretty well. So that checks in whilst keeping your hand very clear. Carefully work your way around. There is a new piece for there. Let's find a couple of new hose clamps and get it put back on the car. Now, stay this now. The lower bolt of these two bolts that hold this in place also is part of the water pump assembly and it is a wet bolt. It goes all the way through into the water jacket. So make sure you RTV the bottom bolt. And the other thing I like to do is uh, spray it out nice with air uh, to try to get a dry mating surface so that you have a better likelihood of this bonding. Otherwise you'll get a little weep leak. Um, ask the Land Rover guys about that. They pretty much all do the same thing. So, so let's get this put in the car. So one thing that is critical uh, about this setup here with the swirl pot are these little spacers that go in behind the bracket that goes down on the water pump. They likely fell on the ground when you pulled the, uh, when you pulled the bolts out, mine did. Uh, so you gotta retrieve them, uh, get them nice and dry and cleaned up and they will go behind there. But without that, uh, it does put a kind of a funky angle on the whole thing and probably would cause some damage to the pump. So.
that was pretty easy and admittedly this is the easiest hose uh, to build in the car so let's see if it fits where we think it's going to fit there is no reason why that won't work the way it is that is the uh, lower radiator ho or upper radiator hose uh, installed took just a bit of trimming uh, I routed it slightly more efficiently than the previous version so that I'm not going underneath the sway bar, I'm actually going in between the sway bar and the front cross member. I'm gonna go ahead and get the hose clamps tightened down and that'll be this half done. But there's not really a good way to get from the water pump outlet or inlet, I guess, to this hose. There's a cross member, there's some bracing, there's a sway bar. Quite frankly, it's a little bit odd. So what I chose to do was build this in two sections, utilizing the metal piece to kind of brace the uh, silicone joiners where it needed to be kind of in the gap between where the header comes out and makes its U-turn uh, to go down to the muffler through the cats. Um, it's a fairly hot item in the engine bay, but I've got it kind of in the middle, so I think it's going to stay plenty cool. Also, unlike last time, I pulled this bracket off that supports the adjustment for the alternator, and that made a huge difference as far as clearance. So if you're doing this at home, if you're following along, if you're one of the 12-ish TVR chimeras in the United States, that's probably a good way to do it. Let's put it together, see how it fits. Yep, I like that. There is clearance between the cross member and the silicone. There's good gap between the silicone and the uh, header, plenty of air room here, and nothing is touching or rubbing on any other part of the frame. So I think that's about as good as it's gonna get. I'll lock it all down with hose clamps and fill the system. All right guys, that pretty much wraps up this small upgrade I did to my TVR Chimera. If you like this video, hit that subscribe button, smash the like button, do all the good YouTube stuff, and we'll see you in the next video, which will probably be the Datsun.